list of things you need to know. Hi guys! Hi guys! Hi guys! Huh? Hi guys! Our first topic for this series is things you need to know before getting a dog. And hence why Wrinkly is here and I'm here. <laughs> so this is our five-year-old dog Wrinkly. Um, he's a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. We've had him since puppy. Wrinkly because he was really wrinkly when he was little and we couldn't think of a name before. So Wrinkly has just left. Uh, he's probably bored because I'm talking a lot. But yes, um, so we bought them together. Um, there's Fatchi who is now an angel to us. He unfortunately died um, last year. Miss you, Fatchi. Because of the pandemic, most of you are staying at home and probably a lot of you are really bored right now and you thought of getting a dog or any pets at all to just to entertain you whilst you're at home because you got a lot of time to look after them. So we thought of making this video to lay out majority of the information you may need to know and what to expect when your puppy or dog arrives home. These are the most important questions you need to ask yourself first. Are you loving? Are you kind? And most, are you patient? Let me tell you that again. Are you patient? I know a lot of you are imagining happy thoughts and feelings when you think of having a dog at home. But let me tell you that dogs are for life and it is a long-term commitment. This pandemic or lockdown will probably last for a year or two, we don't know. You would probably be glad that you've got a pet at home, you have someone with you all the time. Or maybe you want to purchase a dog because you don't want babies yet and you want to treat the dog as your own baby. But have you thought of your life of having a dog for the next 12 to 13 years? Having a dog is like having a baby or a two-year-old child. What if you suddenly thought in the next two to three years that, shall we just have a baby? Do you think you can still look after your dog? Please think about it again and again. Don't get the dog just to make you feel happy for a short while. And don't use the dog just to fill in what's missing in your life and end up rehoming the poor dog because it has already served its purpose. Get a dog because you want to look after it for the long term. Huh? Do you know that having a dog is time consuming? You have to walk your dog at least once a day during the day or the night. And it doesn't matter whether you have a small chihuahua or a big dog like the Alaskan Malamute. So it's winter at the moment. That's why we are gonna protect Wrinkly paws um, with this one. Wrinkly, come here. This is what I do. Wrinkles, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Rub this one so it protects with the cold and grit and all that. Just apply it sparingly. That's it. This is a 1C just to protect him from cold, although he's got first, but he still feels cold. Put this on. There's a hole there so he can pee. So he can pee and there so he can poo. <laughs> Another jacket. It's water. It's a little bit waterproof, isn't it? Yeah. And there's a fleece. Under it. underneath as well. Yeah. Harness, of course. It's a body harness. Yeah. Why do we use body harness? Because we go out cycling and it's easier. It doesn't hurt his neck or anything. That's it. And we're done. He's all ready, aren't you, Wrinkles? You're all ready? <laughs> he wants to go out now? So Mr. G is running and I'm on my bike. This is how we exercise Wrinkly. Dogs need a lot of simulation. Time to train your dog, even just the basic ones. Sit. Down. Roll. 
Good boy. Pull. Good boy. Bow. Wait. Wait. Bang. Good boy. <laughs> and we also had to train him walking beside us when we're going out cycling. Because we don't like him going on our sofa, we had to train him not to go onto the sofa. And it was really, really hard because these stuffies are very stubborn, very stubborn breed. Although they understand what you want them to do, they don't follow it at all. Huh? And that is why he has got a spot here on our lounge. And this is it, where I'm sitting at, at the moment. And he was like, why are you there? You haven't got space for me. Okay, I'm gonna move here. Come on then, sit down. Good boy. <laughs> now he listens. We also trained Wrinkly not to go upstairs because upstairs are carpeted and we don't want his little furs on there. So I'm gonna tempt Wrinkly with his chicken liver, okay? And we'll see if he goes upstairs. This is what he does when Mr. G is in the toilet. He's like, Daddy, don't leave me downstairs. I'll stay here on the rug waiting for you. So let's see what Wrinkly is doing downstairs when we're upstairs. This is what he does. <laughs> you happy to see me? You happy to see me shrinkles? We also trained Wrinkly that whenever he has food, we can take it away from him just to avoid having food aggression, especially when you've got children around. Sit. Go. Of course, you don't want them to poo inside your house, right? So you have to train them to poo outside. Otherwise, your house is going to smell and visitors don't like that. For our dog Brinkley, we had to install a dog flap so that he can let himself out when he wants to go for a poo or a wee. <laughs> if you don't like the idea of having a dog flap, then imagine waking up early in the morning to let your dog out. Have you got that time? Are you prepared for that? Also, a lot of times when you want to go out of your house for around four to six hours and you leave your dog behind, you would be worried whether your dog is actually chewing your furniture or if your dog is barking for four to six hours and your neighbors complain. And if people in your household works around eight to 12 hours a day, you can't leave your dog alone in the house for a long time. We also trained Wrinkly that an open door doesn't mean that he has to come out. And you have to train them to do this so that they don't get lost. They don't wander around outside your property and end up being stolen. Right, Wrinkles? Huh? We've got Wrinkly here and the chicken liver again. Let's see if he goes out the gate, okay. Come here. Come here. Oh, sit. Wait there. The chicken liver here, look. Oh, can't really see it, but yeah. Another good question is what happens when you travel? Who is going to look after your dog? And yes. It's very time consuming to look for a pet boarding company that is suitable for your dog. Of course, you want to check out different places where you want to leave your dog. So you would have to bear this in mind, okay? This is another good question. Are you squeamish? Because you have to pick up your dog's poop. Yes, pick up your dog's poop. Please be a responsible dog owner and pick up your dog's poop. It's going to poop. Shh. It's going to poop, poop. Come on, 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 come on
Come on, Mr. G, pick it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And this is where you put the poop. Very good. <laughs> He's right beside me laying down. Next is lifetime cost. Oh, don't start me with this one. First, of course you have to purchase your dog or your pet and that would cost you around at least 500 pounds to 2,000 pounds. You have to buy them food which will cost you around 50 to 100 pounds for two to four weeks depending on their breed or depending on their weight depending on their size and if you want them to attend social classes so that they don't develop dog aggression that would cost you around 150 to 200 pounds at least and that is only for a few weeks training okay this doesn't stop here if you don't want to pay millions of pounds on vet bills you have to get a dog life insurance and it will cost you around 200 to 400 pounds a year this doesn't include the excess fee of 100 or 200 pounds or could be more. More from the vet bills are booster injections, deworming, and a lot more. Before your puppy or dog arrives, you would have to pet proof your home. You'd probably need a cage, a dog bed, blankets, a lot of chewing toys, barrier gates, and many more. If not one of these has turned you off from getting a dog, then maybe you are prepared to owning a dog. Think it through a hundred times though. Think it through a hundred times. When you get a dog, you have to search what breed is right for you. It's the dog that is suitable for your lifestyle. Just to say this as well, that if you do decide purchasing a dog, please visit the adoption or rehoming centers first instead of buying a puppy, but it really depends on your circumstances as well. So you'd be able to give the dogs there a second chance uh, to a loving home, a second chance to be loved. So what do you think? Can you afford to have a dog and do all the commitments? Thank you for watching this video and I shall see you on my next. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more videos. Hanggang sa muli! Paalam! <laughs>